coaches, players, cheerleaders, board members, parents, and Red Tornado fans. And special thanks to Jose Gonzalo and David McPhee. When I was an athlete at Mount Carmel, and I would use the name of that town to represent all the towns that make up the Mount Carmel Area School District. The room we put was the marquee event of the year's season. Some notable speakers appeared. Jim Brown, star running back, and the best uh, uh, running back of his era, and a member of the NFL Hall of Fame. Duffy Darden, a famous coach of Ohio State, and our own Jim Turner, a legendary coach of Penn State, uh, all appeared here. But Turner was so popular at the time that many people believed that he, at any moment, could run for governor and win either as the nominee of the Democratic Party or the Republican. Obviously, these are different times, and although I am just a local guy who is a devout Red Tornado fan, I am honored to be chosen to speak to you. And as you know, in the early part of my uh, career, I was devoted to uh, sports. Later, I studied law and became a judge. After many years on the bench, I was known for short speeches and long sentences. Being trapped in a pandemic makes the easier things we once did a little harder. Instead of convening in a large catering hall and feeling the electricity of the crowd, we now communicate in cyberspace. It gives me greater appreciation for teachers who have to carry on their work before a computer screen. There is one small benefit uh, from watching this speech on a screen. If you get too bored listening to an old geezer talk about the glory days, you can find your way through the flick of a digital device. I prepared this speech with thoughts about why football is so special in Mount Carmel. I have a history degree and focused its lens on where it started and how we are now affected by the unusual events that we have experienced. Let's start with the game. It was in the late 1800s. An extraordinarily tough and dangerous sport captured the imagination of college athletes in the eastern United States. It was so violent that a movement grew to outlaw the sport. By the end of the century, a young president of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt, an advocate of living the strong life and himself a football fan of the Harvard team, intervened and he organized the National Collegiate Athletic Association. And he charged the NCAA with organizing the sport and regulating it for safety. Football was saved. It's probably one of the reasons Teddy is on Mount Rushmore. In those days, there was no rougher place to live in the United States than the anthracite coal fields of Pennsylvania. The brutal sport of football found fertile soil in the Pennsylvania coal town. This is where the Mount Carmel football story begins. Some have referred to it as a mythology. But that term suggests something beyond reality, extending it to exaggeration. However, what happened reveals something of flesh and blood, sweat and tears, and a healthy amount of genetic predisposition. The early waves of immigration brought together a famous, a famous melting pot of diverse groups, races, and religions. One of the democratic revelers was the field of sports. Youngsters mingled and many proved their mettle on the field of sports competition. Coal towns were not an easy place to live. Men and boys worked in the mines together. Education was scarce, and there was only Sunday available for leisure time. That's when the uh, new Mount Carmelites devoted their leisure time to football. They brought together moms, dads, families, and the townspeople into a competition that became a little friendlier with the passage of time. It was in this precious leisure time that they talked, cheered, developed a strong sense of community and pride, and a, and a cultural heritage 
had begun. Communities outside of the coal region had sports teams who were like, likewise looked upon with pride. Sporting events provided entertainment and promoted a healthy environment for youngsters. Sweat was different than Mount Carmel. In Mount Carmel, football was regarded as life itself. It commanded community environment. A permanent class of gatekeepers evolved. There have been books written over the years about how it takes a village to raise a child. The football heritage of Mount Carmel reflects that phenomenon. When you have a town with close-knit families those, and those gatekeepers uh, and the many diverse citizens that make up that place, it all went down for the interest of the kids. Growing up in Mount Carmel, I came to know and interact with those gatekeepers. They were neighbors, friends, coaches, teachers, police officers, merchants, professionals, and many more. They shared their time and were emotionally invested uh, with the kids. The most remarkable thing is how transcendent generations from the late 1800s to the present day continued in this unique heritage. When you grew up in Mount Carmel, you noticed the change of seasons. From late summer to late fall, the color red was more prominently displayed, and there was considerable chatter about the new team, the coaches and the players. You can feel a community rearranged. It is time for the football heritage to wrap its arms around the community. Autumn is the social season in Mount Carmel. The town dresses up for football season. But the grand heritage, the tradition of Mount Carmel football, has run into some difficult times in the recent uh, months uh, during this this time of upheaval, upheaval caused by the pandemic. Our kids are detached from all the important human support system that has been the lifeblood of the community. I know that uh, uh, from a fan and, and living among those gatekeepers. For many years, I have I've been a member of the supper club, and it uh, well uh, represents uh, the diversity of the community that comes together every week to honor the players, cheerleaders, band members, and keep that continuity going. And right now, there's no supper club, uh, and we, we miss uh, that feeling. It's hard to make a speech, by the way, when you're speaking into a, a screen on cyber space. I'd love to uh, be able to intermingle with everybody and speak to you all personally. We're grateful for what we have, and we're particularly grateful to Mr. McPhee here, who's the electronic wizard of the Mount Carmel School District. The pandemic will come to an end in one day, and we will need to restore that old historical heritage. We begin, by, we will begin that process by looking back and also looking within ourselves to learn how our forebears survived those hard times. We have survived the passage of generations who worked, started from working in coal mines from dawn to dusk, and sometimes not seeing the light of day uh, for periods of time. Miners would get up in the morning before dawn, work a grueling uh, shift, and come back when it was already dark, at least in the uh, later part of the year. Uh, they were consigned to a very difficult life, a life of hard labor. They daily were exposed to explosions in the mines, exposed to poisonous gases, and if they survived, they looked forward to uh, a rather young lifespan due to uh, the onset of uh, what they called miner's asthma. It was a terrible lung disease, and uh, we look now at the uh, coronavirus and I, for one, can't think it could be any worse than the minor asthma. However, generally it is. There was no health insurance in those days. There were no social safety nets. 
get this required. Don't just trace our roots and see the forest gravel group of coal, coal miners. They rely upon self sufficiency, the help of their neighbors, their churches, and those important gate gatekeepers. We, survive, we also survived an earlier pandemic in 1918 and 1919. I hope you have had the opportunity to see the old photos with the many non-formalized wearing masks and keeping the safe social distancing. When they got to it, they were at a disadvantage. We can do the same. There were also two world wars and a great depression. And men had to leave the community and go overseas and offer the laws that should protect what we value. Uh, that kind of uh, uh, dedication uh, to friends, family, and nation, and community is still with us. We still have young people that go off into the military and defend our, our liberties. When times uh, become desperate, we draw upon that old heritage that taught us how to suck it up and to prevail. Once again, the community was pulled together for our own survival. We have valuable lessons that we want uh, to help us along. Now, a football banquet would not be complete without some discussion of non carnal football and, and some of those important things that, that touch upon the subject matter of the speech. When I was playing football in the 1960s, the mid to late 1960s, I was fortunate to play in a, a very historic game. In 1966, uh, we took on the team of Carlisle. Now, uh, to give you some background about that football game, Carlisle was a tremendous team with all the thundering herd, and they had been undefeated for two years. The prior year to playing on Carmel, they came up to the coal region and played St. Clair, which was a very small town right outside of Pottsville. St. Clair is currently absorbed into the Pottsville School District. But at that time, they laid a, laid a beating on, on St. Clair, and uh, they came away with not much respect for Coal Region football. Indeed, uh, their coach, his last name was Whitehead, Coach Whitehead made some disparaging remarks about the quality of non formal football. So then, a year later, uh, the gauntlet was thrown down, and Mount Carmel was not just going to play a football game, but we were playing to preserve the self-respect of Coal Region football. And now I, I ask you to think about those those people, those fans, those gatekeepers I mentioned. Well, it was a very different game, different than any I ever played. The, the turnout of the crowd set a record for the school. You know how it is on Friday night when you drive down Third Street and the band is playing and the school buses arrive and it's another Friday night. Not this time. Third Street from Mount Carmel High School at Third and Market all the way down to the stadium was lined 10 deep on each side. It was hard for the buses to get through. When we arrived at the stadium, it was a monster crowd. There was hardly room to get onto the field. As I looked up into the uh, uh, out the skirts of the field on those coal banks that surround the field, they were filled to capacity. So this was something special. And we had a grueling game against this powerhouse team. And uh, we were fortunate. We, we had the backing of that crack of, of, of those fans. And I want to use that as an opportunity to tell you what it looked like, like from the player standpoint. We were in awe. We were supercharged. That feeling of electricity uh, was was running through us. We knew there was something at work here more than ourselves. We played hard. We had some great players. Uh, Greg Goviak was an All-American quarterback. Daddy Nigoro was one of the best uh, split ends that the, the team has ever known. And they put on a real display of offensive football. I was playing on defense and we did our best to hold them together. 
and the game ended uh, 32 to 28. And we were sky high, and that set a new standard right there for us. Not only Mount Carmel football, but Mount Carmel's place in, in football throughout Pennsylvania. So we look back on that and see the interchange between community and kids and how that was used to uh, stimulate pride and take on a, an opponent uh, that was probably greater than us. But on that given day, they, they weren't because we had something special going. Now, I'm going to fast forward another 20 years or so and uh, talk about another football game. And by this time, I was back in town working as a lawyer. I may have been a, a local prosecutor at the time. Uh, but we were playing some great football. Uh, we had some very tough kids, which was normal for Mount Carmel. And we were in the state playoff system by then. When I was playing, we didn't have a state playoff system. We just played in the Eastern Conference. But uh, in these later days, uh, we were going to uh, we were pitted against Bishop McDevitt High School of Harrisburg. McDevitt reminded me of the old Carlisle team. They were world leaders. They had a, a powerhouse team, a strong line, great backs and quarterback. And uh, about a week or so before the game, there was an article that appeared in the Harrisburg Patriot News written by a columnist by the name of Horvath. And he made some disparaging remarks, echoing the uh, words of uh, Coach Whitehead a generation before. He talked about the different qualities of football that were played, that the coal region did not stand up to the same qualities as, as District 3, I believe, and, and uh, Bishop McDevitt. He also poked fun at uh, the ethnicity of the coal region and those funny last names that we seem to have. Well, thank you, Mr. Horvath. When it came time to play the game, we played on a neutral field, which was Shemokin. Not that neutral, I guess, but it was the Shemokin field. And it was another record crowd. The people turned out from everywhere. It was hard to find a seat. I remember sitting up near the press box when Mr. Horvath came into the stadium. And he had to have a police escort. I thought that was rather unusual for the sporting event, but maybe he had said that this was the, the right thing to do. Anyway, Mount Carmel uh, let loose. The uh, team not only defeated uh, Bishop of Devitt, but they literally pounded them as well. And every time Mount Carmel scored, a massive uh, crowd of Mount Carmel uh, fans turned their heads to the scoreboard, pointed at Horvath, and said, take that. So, there was one other comment I heard from a fan from uh, the opposition from Harrisburg who had come up. He looked at the side of the crowd, and he says, my God, he says they brought the whole town. And he was right. They did bring the whole town. That, that's how Mount Carmel reacts to to hard times and competition. And that spirit continued, and I'll tell one last uh, story. And that was when we were in the state finals game, and it was uh, another dozen or more years later, and this time it was down at Hershey. And when we went into the stadium, one side of the field was filled up from uh, bottom to top, from left side to right side, with thousands and thousands of fans. Uh, it was not surprising that it was the record number of fans that ever showed up for a state championship football team. There were all those gatekeepers, all those fans that came back once again to support the team. Uh, we won that game handily. I'm not sure we set a record in scoring, but we won it very, very handily. So, that's how it works in Mount Carmel with the heritage. The people of the town are concerned about the uh, 
uh, lives of their kids and how their kids react to uh, pressure and uh, and how we support ourselves. Maybe it's the hard scrabble DNA left over from the coal miners. Maybe it's just that we live in these uh, close-knit uh, communities. So I want to finish this by telling you what we have to do. We have to go back to those times and go back to those values uh, that we had in the community. There's no excuse not to. We're going to get over this. Uh, and when we do, we have to go back to these kids and we have to support them. We have to demonstrate what it is, uh, what the values are of living in the town and, uh, uh, and depending once again upon the same thing, churches, those gatekeepers, those separate cults, and all those people that, that make up the community. And as we are in this together, we all should think of it this way. Sometimes we have hard times. Sometimes somebody will come along and stumble. But if someone stumbles, we must pick him up. We must shake off the debris. And we store him within the community. We must be mindful that there are no guarantees in life itself. If we are to survive, and once again thrive, we have to sacrifice and draw upon our common heritage. Be proud of where you come from, no matter what setbacks occur. Know always that when you face an opponent, you are never alone. After all, if they fight you, they have to fight the whole town. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, for that most inspiring and encouraging speech. It is really appreciated that you were able to do this for us today. Before I